this needs to be clearly understood also clearly have insights into because this happiness is not based on objects of our perception although when a proper proper understanding rises paradoxically enough the objects of our perception no longer play trick and no longer able to misplace the source from where happiness comes from but if it is not properly realized and understood where happiness comes from then we are as it were bound to expecting happiness to come from the object experiencing we expecting that to come from correct thought process we expecting that to come from correct people who will bring that happiness the right people we expecting that to come from the right set of circumstances and the list is pretty much endless or at least long enough therefore osho's saying come to mind is it is not about having what you want but wanting what you have it's one of those sayings that says it all on all levels it's not about having what you want it's wanting what you have this is called complete realignment otherwise there is this pangs and this this quench constantly constantly so the, therefore happiness is or would remain to be an elusive concept until we know where happiness is rooted and what makes us happy truly because happiness is nothing other than that what empowers all the responses which we then experience and call it as happiness this is the quality of ananda it's the quality of bliss and it's just happened that all objects of our perception are reflective rays of ananda they are reflective so in other words this is also um less tantric maybe more advaitic advaitin that vedantic perspective is that in order to give a more stark in, you know impression about the state of affairs is like seeking satisfaction in the object perception we are always up against the cold surface of the mirror where all these objects that do provide us a fleeting sense of joy all turn into nothing because they are reflective rays they are not not that what illumines it all but ananda it's inherent 
in the quality of your being. So therefore Sat Chitananda is spoken of in one breath, in one sentence. Sat Chit Ananda, being, consciousness, bliss. To break it down into accessible way of how you can contemplate this. Being is that which is beyond comprehension, beyond any reach. beyond of the beyond, being here is unapproachable. And yet, within that being, the quality of chit, quality of consciousness, that quality of consciousness rises out of the ocean of being, where it is capable of comprehending comprehending itself as being. And that in turn naturally, spontaneously translates into a tremendous joy that it brings, which is Ananda. So Sat, Chit, Ananda are indispensable aspects of the Absolute Reality. So if anyone, or if you come across of some such propositions or statements that Absolute nature is nothing and has no qualities, no attributes. It is true, true, but to this degree, because it does have these qualities. Absolute is incomprehensible. Atmost reality is, of course, beyond any comprehension and beyond any attributes. It attributeless, and yet it displays these very qualities which are inherent aspects of that Absolute. These are being, consciousness, bliss. Being, consciousness, bliss. So that what we call happiness now if we are to put this together, it's a result or outcome, spontaneous natural outcome of conscious awareness of the essence of who we are. And that rises as bliss. That's what true happiness is. When that understanding dawns, we remain unattached by comings and goings, gains and losses, truly. Not just because so and so said that. It is true matter of fact. It is as it is. Because our experience is then in itself illumined by nothing other than the experience of Ananda in the first place. Of course, when we say Ananda, it doesn't mean that someone rolls in ecstasy. It's just one of the aspects of how it can be experienced. It can be a gently, sweetly bubbling in a sense that simply there and being simmered in that. And it may not be even perceived as soon as the surface level of experience takes over. But soon as that surface level of experience subsides, you fall back into that sweet, simmering sense of bliss rising infinitely. This is the source of all joys. This is the very, very source of all happiness. 